Welcome back to 13C. Today, we're taking a look at the Tyrant 9M. This is from AAC, and this is their modular 9mm can. It's in the full configuration right now. Comes in about 8 inches long, about 1 and a quarter inches in diameter, and weighs in right at 9.5 ounces. Now, one of the big features of this is the fact that it is toolless. What that means is, you can completely take this guy apart with your hands. You don't need any special tools at all. So we'll run through that here real quick. So taking this part is really easy and as I said doesn't take any tools. First unscrew the end cap and it'll come right off. Um, it does have an o-ring in there uh, to seal out the gases and it is knurled around the top here to help give you some uh, better grip on it as you're unscrewing it. Now your baffle stacks in here there's going to be two baffles in your uh, top, your K portion right here, and we'll go ahead and unscrew this now. And then your bottom portion, there's gonna be uh, five baffles. So make sure as you're taking this apart, um, if you're taking this apart out in the field, don't mix up uh, the way that these go in unless you've got your manual with you while you're out in the field. If you just take this apart the first time you get it, dump it out, and you don't have that uh, instructions or you didn't note how they came out, um, you may have a bit of, bit of a, a chore ahead of you figuring out which ones go in which direction anyway these guys are indexed inside here um, so you can put them back together uh, attaching it the end cap right on here it's just that simple to move it down to its K configuration snug it down by hand and boom you're done uh, this is this is that uh, longer configuration that goes on here with the extra two baffles um, this at this point now and I'm gonna set this down at this point, you're dropping down from that full 8-inch size to about 5.8 inches. You've also dropped uh, right at 2 ounces off of this, bringing this down to about 7.7 .7 ounces in this smaller configuration. And what's that do to the decibels? Well, let's shoot it right now and then we'll talk about it. Going on here is pretty easy. There are actually two adapters uh, that it comes with, piston adapters. You've got your half by 28, which this is, and then it also uh, should include a 13.5 by one left-handed. Uh, that's used a lot of sub guns and stuff like that. So it's kind of uh, nice to see that you're getting uh, both aspects there when you purchase this. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be able to fish my magazine out of my pocket. There we go. All right, so let's run this. Uh, we are still using right now 115 grain uh, bulk ammo, supersonic rounds. We're gonna switch over to some, to some subsonic in just a minute. All right, so you've definitely increased the sound. Now the ratings on here, <clears throat> According to AAC's website, you've got a 33 decibel reduction in the full configuration and a 23 decibel reduction in the shortened configuration. I'm still not wearing uh, any ears under here. Um, it is still hearing safe uh, in within the hearing safe range, uh, below 140 decibels uh, within the short configuration as well, so you don't necessarily have to worry about that. So AAC lists this on their website as a 33 decibel reduction in the full configuration and a 23 decibel reduction in this shortened configuration. Uh, both of those are well under that 140 decibel threshold. Um, the numbers that, that Silencer Shop got, and a huge thank you to Silencer Shop for sending this out for testing here um, while we're doing this video. Uh, silencer shop and you can actually go check out we'll put a link down below or or suggested video something like that uh, to their uh, to their web page because they actually do all the testing themselves on their own equipment which is really nice to see their numbers for this put in the long configuration 124 decibels and in the shortened configuration 134 decibels which puts it about that's average uh, of over multiple shots which puts it about in the uh, same range as AAC's uh, listings on their website maybe within about half a decibel overall. Um, so it's nice to see that we've got some independent verification on how this is turning out in that regard. Uh, just uh, for uh, comparison's sake, we're going to run in some video uh, shooting uh, this unsuppressed. I'm going to have to get some ears on for that uh, because the 9mm decibel rating is about 156 decibels uh, without any sound suppressor on the end of it. So let's go ahead and get a baseline here unsuppressed out of our Glock 19. This 
so is the tie, and the name Tyrant would imply. This uh, is made of grade 9 titanium as well as 7075 T6 aluminum. Uh, it's full auto rated, and it has a high temp Cerakote on it as well. So let's switch over to some 147 grain subsonic rounds. Huh. It's like we're having a little bit of an issue of this guy going back into battery here. I'm uh, gonna have to kind of work on that and try and diagnose it uh, maybe a little bit later. Anyway, uh, that was in the K configuration. Let's expand this back out again, toolless. You just gotta unscrew the end cap. I'll do that, pull it out. Obviously you don't wanna mess with your baffle stack internally here. While you're switching it over, if you do, you'll just need to go back in there and re-index it and reset it. There we go, got it started on the bottom. Get it started on the top here. And technically you never want to do this while it's actually on a firearm because you don't want to risk there being something in the barrel and around coming out and getting in trouble and blowing the end of your hand off. Obviously here we were unloaded, nothing was in it. And on video, I might be taking a couple of shortcuts. Anyway, do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> Trained YouTube professional. Uh, we've got more 147 grain uh, subsonic rounds here and we'll shoot these in this full configuration. Man, it is not digging these 147s. Hmm. All right, well, there we go. I'm uh, maybe going to clean this a little bit. I've been shooting the hell out of it. Might as well take a minute to talk about this right now. This is, uh, this used to be, you guys have seen this in the past. It was all uh, nickel boron. This is my old 9mm EDC. I sent it down to Blackout Custom Cerakote and uh, Force One Tactical. They did a slide cut for me. Uh, did some stippling. Uh, totally re -cerakoted it here. This is a really cool looking gun now. Really digging it. They did a fantastic job. We'll put up some uh, some better pictures here of uh, of the work that they did on this gun. Uh, looks fantastic. Um, I haven't had any issues with it uh, up until now in these 147s uh, suppressed here. So uh, we'll see uh, we'll see what we're looking at here and uh, what might uh, what might the cause of that be. Uh, while we're talking about it, there's going to be a video on this O light as well right here. Uh, this is the PL Mini. Uh, they call it the Valkyrie, and uh, this is a pretty cool. Uh, tiny little light here. It's rechargeable. There'll be a video on this coming out uh, in the next couple of videos here uh, soon. So probably following this video in less than a month. I've switched this back over to the 115 grain. I'm a little concerned about those 147s. The, the, the two boxes I had sitting out here that I was using, they've been sitting out in the barn in a corner. They actually got left out back uh, for a couple months over the winter and some of this cold and wet and stuff. So I'm actually wondering if that maybe that affected some of the uh, powder in it. I'm gonna kind of check some of those out and see what uh, see what I can come up with before I fire any more through here. I don't want to wind up ri risking a squib or anything. This is the only... Uh, uh, threaded pistol I have out here today. I was using a this on uh, my Glock 17 uh, uh, a couple days ago, and I uh, was doing pretty well on it. So, anyway, let's fire a few more rounds here. This is the 115, and uh, we're gonna dance back and forth here between the uh, berm and the steel, uh, just uh, just so you guys can hear a little bit of the difference back and forth. All right, there we go. Um, that actually reminds me of something else. Two things, actually. I don't have any hearing protection in. I don't know, what am I, about, uh, I don't know, 12 yards, something like that from the target. So I don't have any hearing protection in. And uh, that steel, that shoot steel, that this, the ring off that shootsteel.com target and pretty much all steel targets, that is way louder than this can uh, by a lot. So there's actually, I got now just a teeny bit of ringing in my ears. Um, that also reminds me, that's something I wanted to touch on as far as point impact shift. Uh, it looks like so far on this on this uh, particular handgun, this is dropping me um, 
and I shot it uh, earlier a little bit further back at about 20 yards. Looks like it's dropping me about an inch and a half, I'm dropping my groupings about an inch and a half, maybe two inches at 20 yards uh, with this can on it. And uh, I did not, I should have thought ahead and did some testing on that Glock 17 to see how much it changed it. But uh, you wind up getting a point impact shift, something like that. You can actually fine tune it a little bit. If you find you're shooting instead uh, to the left, let's say, you can pull this out if you look on here, uh, the, w the way the Nielsen devices work, you can actually pull it out and turn it uh, without actually turning um, your mount here, what mounts onto your barrel. And that will actually kind of shift your point impact a little bit. So rather than hitting either left or right, you can have it hit uh, up and down. And of course, if you, if you mark those delineations on your... Uh, between the back of your can and this uh, piston adapter where it goes on to uh, your barrel, you'd actually put a little mark there between the two and then you could have a consistent point of impact shift every time you come back if you're putting your baffles and everything back in there in exactly the same way. So that's nice to see. I mean, you're talking about with a handgun, one and a half to two inches. Um, if I was really to dial that back down in and you get uh, somebody with some better pistol skills than I do, um, you know, how much is that going to really matter over the course of... Anyway, something to keep in mind as we go through uh, some of the different testing that we do here. Uh, a lot of questions and feedback and stuff that I get, and I wanted to uh, answer some of that. Uh, one of the questions I do have, and I've got a bottle of water, I'm going to go grab it. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of water in here and shoot it wet. Uh, so let's do that. So this can is meant to be run dry. You can also run it in what's called wet. Now, there's a couple different ways to do that. The easiest way, and what we're going to do here today, is just put a little bit of water in it. You can also use some ablative materials like uh, wire pulling gel, for example, um, and go in that regard. But, um, and there I am just tossing my handgun on the ground with that light on it. Uh, the main reason why is we're actually still trying to test the durability. Anyway, you use some, I'm digressing, you use some wire pulling gel. You want to follow manufacturer's recommendations to the T and make sure you don't put too much in there and you put it in the way you're supposed to. You put too much in there, it can change some of the pressure differences and then you could wind up having a catastrophic failure. Um, you could wind up blocking. There's all different things that could go wrong if you don't do it right. So make sure you do it right uh, if you're going to do it and I'm going to direct you to them for that. For this, um, at least with water, you put too much in there, it's going to kind of run out, whatever. Um, I believe the recommendation is maybe about five milliliters, something like that, which isn't very much at all. I'm just going to pour some in the back here. Um, again, do as I say, not as I do. Um, I don't know. I didn't see any pour out the bottom. But uh, anyway, we're going to put it in there. <clears throat> and um, basically, I'm just, well, putting it on the end here is going to spin it around. And... Um, it's going to kind of move that water around in there. Uh, the one thing that you absolutely do not want to do, and here, I'll take it off to confirm it, is if you wind up finding a way to fill this guy up with water to the point where, uh, you know, you're actually obstructing baffles and, and other things. I mean, I don't see anything in there. There's nothing running out the, uh, you know, filling it up or whatever else. So just make sure when you do these things, you're being smart about it. Um, you don't want any kind of uh, bad things to happen to you, so to speak. And of course, obviously, I'm digressing again. I just need to stop talking and go back to shooting. If I could just do this video with shooting and no talking, I'd be much happier. Uh, anyway, um, 115 grain rounds. Uh, just we're going back to those just because, as I said, uh, uh, you know, there were some, I have some concerns about those 147s. Anyway, uh, about a dozen rounds in here. Let's, uh, let's fire this guy up. We're just going to go into the berm here so that you can hear the sound. It, it's probably hard to tell, but um, there's a little bit of a first round pop, more so in the K configuration than this longer one. But um, the, the slight first round pop, when you've got some water in there, it's just, it's, it, it takes care of that. Let's see for the rest of it. So, there you go. Um, yeah, as you get toward the end, as that water uh, vaporizes, steams off, you're going to lose some of the, uh, uh, the sound reducing capabilities of adding that water in there. That's why people will use some of that wire pulling gel so it lasts, uh, lasts in there longer. Obviously, the other part of, uh, and one of the reasons why I don't like using wire pulling gel, because it, it, it does kind of get a little nasty. There's a decent amount of blowback. And here you can see some of the blowback from the back there of just some of that water in there blowing some of the dirt and, and carbon and gunk out the back there. So 
that's something to keep in mind too. Uh, make sure you're not wearing a really nice shirt if you're gonna be using uh, different types of ablative materials in here to run it. Personally, uh, with the sound suppression that this has, the only real benefit I'm hearing on my end here is toward that first round pop. Other than that, uh, which in this long configuration is pretty negligible anyway. Uh, in the shortened configuration, I'm actually not going to move us over to that right now. Uh, just because with this water in here, I take it apart. Uh, it's going to be, eh, you know, I'm going to be done hand-wise for the rest of the day. So anyway, I appreciate you guys checking in with us. Uh, give me your feedback. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash gun reviews. Let me know some of the things you liked about it. Maybe something you didn't like about it. Something you'd like to see included in the other ones. We'll try and answer those questions. You can leave them down below. As I said, Facebook.com forward slash gun reviews. And of course, Instagram, we're at 13C gun reviews. I'm going to date this thing uh, right now because there's this thing called Vero that's hit. Uh, and we're over there as well as 13C. No idea where that's going to go or really anything about it. But Apparently it's an alternative, and uh, they're not censoring any of the gun channels right now, apparently. Anyway, thanks everybody. Take care, stay safe, and uh, we'll talk soon.